Welcome to this video from Learn the Electrics. Many electricians, especially in the early years of learning the trade, find the schedule of inspections a daunting obstacle. After all, it is two pages packed full of words. Where do we start with it? In this video, we will break it down into several easy to manage steps that will leave you with a much fuller understanding of this document and how to complete it correctly. We will be using the Schedule of Inspections example that is in Appendix 6 of the Wiring Regulations book and this can be found on pages 471 and 472. The first thing to notice is the very first line and it says, for new installation work only. This form, this Schedule of Inspections, is for initial verification work only. If you add a new circuit to a property, for example, this is the form to use when you inspect the work that you have done. This form is not to be used for periodic inspections. They have their own forms. The two pages can be broken down into 11 separate sections as indicated here. It is so much easier to view the document like this. Taking several smaller steps will help you to complete the document with ease. And the form works logically through the installation from the incoming supply through the consumer unit and through the circuits. Follow the process and as you will see over the next few minutes it really is a case of just reading and acting on the details in each item. Within each section there are several items to be inspected. This is so easy the form actually tells you what to inspect and we've shown a few examples here. All you need to do is to interpret what is required and inspect it. Remember to work safely and the regulations prefer you to inspect a safely isolated dead circuit. This is the inspection stage, not the testing part. You do not need the power on to inspect the circuit. Look especially at note number two. For the work that you have done, it asks you to enter one of two responses in the empty box on the right of each item. You will enter either a tick to say yes, I have inspected this item and it is satisfactory, or you will enter NA to say that inspection is not applicable to this item. This item does not apply to this circuit. This slide is very important. You cannot enter an X for unsatisfactory. This form, the schedule of inspections, is for new work only, initial verification, and new work cannot be unsatisfactory. Your work must be 100% correct when it is finished. If anything is unsatisfactory, if you have a snagging list, then the job is not finished. Remedy the problem and then reinspect. You are about to sign a legal document stating that the work is fully complete, that there are no problems or revisits needed, and that the circuit is safe for the client to use. Some of the items will have references to the main part of the wiring regulations book, such as shown here with 416.1 and 416.2. It is telling you where to look to find more information about what it is that you should be checking. Use this information to help you. That is what it is there for. We can begin with section one, the intake position of the supply. And there are six items listed here, 1.1 to 1.6. Things to check will be, is the incoming supply cable in good order? Is the service head in good condition, etc.? There should be no signs of tampering or misuse with the equipment. Is the earth correctly and adequately installed? In fact, is it there? This is an inspection only section. You or your customer do not own the service head. It is the property of the DNO. And if anything is wrong, it should not be you that puts it right. Your duty is just to contact the DNO and request that they put it right. The next section, Number two is about voltage generating sets that are in parallel to or as an alternative to the public supply to the property. Let me explain. Item 2.1 is for generating sets that are a switched alternative to the public supply. We cannot have both on at the same time. An example, a backup generator that can be switched on in the event of a power outage. Item 2.2 is for generating sets that are in parallel with the public supply. They are supplying power to the installation 
at the same time as the public supply. As an example, we could have photovoltaic cells, or solar power systems as they may be called, that feed electrical energy into the system even when the public supply is switched on. Section 3 is to do with automatic disconnection of supply, sometimes abbreviated to ADS. What happens if a fault occurs on the circuit? We want the fuse or breaker to sense this fault and to automatically trip and disconnect the supply. This is automatic disconnection of supply. Once disconnected, the circuit should stay disconnected until the problem is corrected and the breaker is manually reset by a person or the fuse replaced. The breaker should not reset itself. Manual intervention is required. You will be checking that there is an earth so that fault currents can flow to earth and you will be checking that there is a main earth and that it is correctly installed or in the case of TT systems that the earth rod exists and that it is connected to the client's earth bar. Is there main bonding to the metallic gas and water pipes? Are labels in place? Do we need RCDs? And then we have basic protection for section 4. We need to know that in fault free conditions the client or any other person using the premises is not going to get an electric shock from touching a cable, an accessory or an attached appliance. There should be no exposed copper conductors. They should all be inside the enclosures, the sockets, the luminaires, light switches, etc. Are the barriers correctly installed, adequately fixed with the correct number of screws? Are the enclosures properly fixed to the wall so that they do not fall off when the client is plugging things in and out? Section 5 looks at additional protection. First of all, what is additional protection? It is protection in addition to the fuses or breakers. There are two types of additional protection recognised by the wiring regulations. Protection by 30 milliamp RCD and the supplementary bonding of all exposed and extraneous metalwork in a location. Supplementary bonding and main bonding are two different things. Don't get them confused. If 30 milliamp RCDs are present, then supplementary bonding is not required. However, if RCDs are added as an upgrade to an installation that already has supplementary bonding, then there is no need to remove the supplementary bonding. It can stay in place. Section 6 considers other methods of protecting persons and livestock. Methods such as SELV or PELV systems. These are extra low voltage or ELV up to 50 volts AC maximum. Then there is double insulation or reinforced insulation around the copper conductors. And we may have electrical separation of low voltage circuits using safety isolating transformers. Low voltage or LV circuits are between 50 volts and 600 volts AC with reference to earth. This means that nearly all of our domestic and most of our industrial circuits are low voltage. An example of electrical separation using a safety isolating transformer would be an electric shaver socket to the approved BSEN standards. This has 230 volts in and 230 volts out, but the output does not have a reference to earth. It is separated from earth. Section 7 is all about the consumer unit or distribution board. Accessibility to operate the breakers or space to carry out maintenance, etc. In an emergency, if the customer had to turn off the circuit or the whole board even at the consumer unit, can they get to it easily? Make sure for your part that they can. Is it located where a normal person can access it quickly? Section 8 is a biggie. It spans across page 1 and page 2. It is all about the circuit that you have just installed. It may look imposing, but take each item one at a time. For example, 8.1 asks, are the conductors the right size for that circuit? And generally, we will have used the tables in the on-site guide to select these. Another one, 8.8, .8, asks if the cables are correctly identified. It is simply asking, is the phase wire brown, is the neutral blue? That's it. 8.14, do we need RCD protection for the circuit? 
815, can we turn the circuit off for maintenance and so on. On to number 9 for permanently connected equipment. This is any equipment that is hardwired into the fixed installation. Items that are not unpluggable can carry extra dangers as they cannot be unplugged in an emergency. They cannot be moved easily and so on. Think about where they are positioned. Are they near flammable surfaces? Lighting that penetrates the ceiling may introduce heat into the ceiling void. Is the equipment securely located so that it remains in place? Is there access to the equipment for maintenance? Section 10 covers rooms with a bath or shower. The form you're using is for new work for initial verification and all your work in a bathroom must be 30 milliamp RCD protected as RCD protection is now required for all low voltage circuits in bathrooms or showers that are new or that you have worked on. Section 11 covers all the other special locations except bathrooms and showers. Whilst the information in item 11.1 .1 is very sparse, it suggests that you should make your own list of the inspections carried out and attach this to the schedule of inspections. Common sense must prevail here and sometimes the equipment installed in these locations will come with a manufacturer's checklist which can form the basis of your own inspection checklist. And lastly, the signature, the date and your clearly printed name. The schedule of inspections must be signed and dated by the person carrying out the inspection. The schedule of inspections forms part of a legal document and as such it can be used as evidence for prosecution or defence in a court of law. Carried out diligently, you can use these forms to prove that, at the time of the inspection, the work carried out by you was to the standards, it was safe and fit for purpose. Don't skip this inspection process. Carry out the inspection in a professional and competent manner. Don't think it will be alright. Check to make sure it is correct. Then you can sleep easy at night. And there we are. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned a little more about electrics. Please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and to be sure of not missing our next Tech Tips video. Subscribing also helps us too and we do appreciate this. Tapping in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.